Okay, so here we are with the second video in the series of fixing this FT300 that Hade has provided to me. <clears throat> now I've been in contact with Hade the last couple of days or yesterday and today and have decided a couple of things. Um, first thing, I'm not going to completely tear this engine down. I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just replace the parts on it and try to run it. And the reason I'm going to do that is because in my first video I saw that it does not look like the exhaust valves have much carbon residue on them and I also thought that this felt pretty good so what I did yesterday yesterday or Friday I'm not sure when it was is I put Marvel mystery oil liberal amount of Marvel mystery oil in this port and then I took it outside and I heated the engine up with my heat gun and I just rotated it through a few times and this thing has such good compression and it feels good it could just be a matter of one of those things where things inside are kind of dry and they just need to be lubricated so instead of just going ahead and disassembling this thing completely until I know I have to I'm just going to begin uh, replacing the parts which mainly is this head and move the valve components into the new head, install the carb intake manifold and that type of thing and then we'll go for a, a test run and I'll evaluate it further from there so I've got all of these spare parts here but I'm just going to start by working on the head that needs the attention which is the right one and luckily this mount the engine mount sits on there like this and it kind of keeps this up in a good angle for me to work on. Now the other thing that this is going to do is it's going to allow me to, when I take the head off, I'll be able to see the top of the piston obviously and the valves and that'll also give me a good idea of uh, you know, approximately how much runtime it has because if this is really a low runtime engine there's really no reason to go tearing it completely apart unless it's absolutely necessary. Seeing as it's not my engine, I don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to. Okay, that's just want to come right off there, that's fine. Push rod out. That tube. Oh, geez, yeah, look at this. This engine's new. I mean, look at that. It has zero carbon buildup on it at all. In fact, the story that Hade told me about this engine and that the fellow um, prior to him that crashed it had a dead stick. Uh, it kind of explains things now because perhaps that fellow didn't even have this engine broken in or even set up properly and he was flying around or whatever and that's why it died on him because maybe it wasn't even set up properly, wasn't broken in but I mean look at this, I mean this thing is brand new, it would be sacrilege to uh, just go and tear this thing apart let me set this aside and let's look and see what our valves look like now before I do that I want to pull these other screws out so they don't just go well, magnets can be helpful, but they can also be a real pain in the butt. Alright, so let's look at this. Yeah, look at that. There's no run time on this thing at all. I mean, I would guess by looking at this that the thing was run twice, three times maybe. So, wow. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I think there's probably a head shim here, but that's really not going to bother me. What I need to do is have to pull these valves out, remove all of this stuff, to transfer to the new head. Side, that's that side. Got a pin. Now what we'll do is we'll take a nice fresh clean paper towel. Just jam that in here. And that's gonna hold those valves up while I go and 
drop them out. Okay. Let me get my magnifier on here and my magnet. Rotate on me. Oops. There we go. I got gotcha. you. That keeper spring. Stop doing your job. Okay, now these valves should just drop right out. Okay, so uh, let's remove this glow plug. Interesting, it looks like a Fox Miracle plug. Alright, so there's the old head. And I've got my valve parts here. I'll just leave them there. I'm gonna take a look at these valves and see if they need any. There's a little bit of carbon buildup on them now. Let me show you what I do when I'm cleaning up an exhaust valve is I just take a razor blade. Now these valves are hardened steel, so this blade is not going to hurt this valve stem at all. And I just kind of, I could soak it, but even in the LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner, I find I still end up having to scrape the carbon deposits. So I need to put this valve, since it's the exhaust valve, on this side. Pretty simple, but I want to make sure I get it right. Okay, fresh piece of paper towel. And let's get this guy's reassembled here. trying to do is get this thing lined up so I can just slide that thing in place and do that. That's the, this time this part of the wrench actually helped me out because I just kind of put this thing on there, slide it down in place and boom, it's on. Let's see how easy it is to do twice. installed. Okay, okay so in this segment I'm just going to be installing the carb intake manifold and getting the rest of the engine uh, basically assembled which is basically just these parts and the exhaust. Now this choke mechanism I wasn't planning on putting this on just because it's missing the black piece that actually seals the carb to choke it so without that piece it's kind of pointless to install that. This intake manifold already has the o-rings installed so I'm just going to put a little bit of lube on them and figure out how this goes on here. So looks like this gasket goes in here.
Now, this throttle stop screw is not set right. To see it, this throttle closes all the way. That isn't something I want. You want it set so that you can idle or not completely kill the throttle. At least that's how I'm going to set it for running on the stand. So, gotta make sure it stays open just a hair so it doesn't die. And I'm setting it, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not. I'm setting it about an opening of about that much. Well, maybe a hair more. I'm not sure how this thing's going to run, so. It's about sixteenth of an inch or so. Keep forgetting about that damn or zoom on the camera. Okay, so. What we've got here is replacement head. It's been put on. Valves have been set. The new pushrod cover with O-rings was installed. I just put the intake, brand new intake manifolds, manifold adapter or manifold here. Installed the carb, and I just put the exhaust headers on. See, so theoretically. This engine could be run. Now, let me zoom out even more. I have already drilled my PSP stand. You can see it looks like Swiss cheese from all the different engines I've mounted to it. I did drill this already. So it can be attached like so and run. So like I said, the last things I really need to do is I've got a glow plug harness from my Sato 100 that I'm probably going to use because I don't know about this thing here. It doesn't want to just push on. I'm not really sure how that thing is supposed to work and I don't want to damage it. So the Sato one just kind of clips onto the top of the plugs and it's probably going to be a lot easier to use. So the next order of business is to mount this on my upright and get the ignition or the glow harness on and then we can try giving it a run.